I think a lot of people look at something like this and go, don't see the potential for a meadow. But I looked at this and said, this would make an excellent small meadow. So the day I showed up to this small garden in Marin, what I saw was basically some interesting elements, but no real coordination between them. Strange lines of agapanthus, blue fescue, shrubs that really had sort of outlived their, their purposefulness. And on the left, just sort of anonymous bushes of green. I felt that the existing shrubbery really wasn't doing anything to add value to the house. Interesting elements, but this <laughs> you could see that there was need for improvement. And here was this little postage stamp of a garden. This is an excellent candidate for a small meadow. So here's the new scheme, a meadowette that we took a lot of the existing agapanthus that was there in just a little straight row, dug it, divided it, increased it, and then laid it out in a more informal fashion. And then we added white birch strategically so that when you, you won't see all the houses across the street. In the winter time, because this is a deciduous tree, we get sunlight hitting the house and warming the house. But in the summer, we get the shading and cooling effect of the tree. So here's the plants newly growing in. Again, you can see the mulch ground cover. But what I felt we needed because of the formality of the landscape is to have some plants give some architecture so that here, when this fills in, you'll see a a small drought tolerant clipped hedge of boxwood, of dwarf boxwood, with all the wildness of the meadow nicely contained behind the hedge. Now, in this fall photograph, you can see the meadow has really come into its own. The simple sweep of Cesleria autumnalis, one of the best ground cover grasses, with only 12 inches of foliage and a few more inches of flower spike with the taller accent perennials behind it and the taller accent grasses has really come into its own. Simple, gorgeous, low maintenance and ecologically sound. Instead of the early blobs of foliage, we now have this wonderful oak leaf hydrangea with its summer flowers and winter red, purple, fall color will give us good fall color later in the season. Down below, you see the low ground cover Falkia repens with its tiny little white flowers growing in between the stepping stones. A, a ground cover that doesn't require constant clipping in order to keep it low. In this photograph, the agapanthus are in beautiful full bloom and this is another thing I like to do in a meadow is to take one type of plant in this case the agapanthus and then plant six different varieties of agapanthus so that it reads very simple but it actually has more complexity to it you can see the pale yellow of the Peter Pan down below the purple of the storm cloud and mood indigo in the background and some of the newer intensely blue forms in the foreground. Calamagrostis feather reed grass with three foot of foliage and two to three feet of flower overhead provides brush strokes that catch the light in, as a backdrop to the lower meadow. And those seed heads are really set off by the dark purple background of the purple leaf plum. Keeping the flowering grasses very simple in their arrangement is really important to this meadow feeling tidy. So the pink flower of the Panacetum oriental in the foreground is pretty much similar in its shape and form to the spikes of the Calamagrostis carl furster, the feather reed grass, in the background. 
It's easy to go wrong if you get too many different types of seed heads together. It can start looking messy. So there's diversity here, but there's simplicity as well. Keep it simple. That's an easy formula for success.